Wanda Maximoff has just proven to any doubters that she is the most powerful being currently in the MCU. So powerful, in fact, that she seems to have single-handedly created mutants. And all that power comes from a very unexpected source. Wanda's emotions. Oftentimes, we see our heroes in situations where they are completely in control of themselves and their powers. Black Panther, for example, needed no learning curve to master his abilities. He just became Black Panther from minute one. To the contrary, Wanda spent years being trained to master her powers to be used as a weapon. And even after switching to Team Avengers, she still wasn't very well trusted. So when her world went away and she had no one to turn to, Wanda stopped trying to live in a world that didn't want her and instead created a world that suited her. And because her emotional state was so present and felt, Wanda's powers were amplified to levels that she didn't even know that she had. Hey guys, I'm Megan, and welcome to the Fangirl, where I am so ridiculously pumped up by how elegantly Marvel Studios handled the emotional state of Wanda. In so many other action franchises, a woman who shows suffering in any way is seen as fragile, but Wanda would let her tears flow while shredding apart your internal organs. That's because crying isn't weakness, it's overflowing stress. Previously in the MCU, we had a lot of kick, punch, bang, land the perfect girlfriend kind of thing, but the emotional state of the characters were always a driving force more than a power source. What I mean by that is that Steve Rogers, for example, has never really been overly emotional as Captain America. He has feelings, sure, but we never see him doing things like crying in a battle, and we never really know how he feels a loss. He's very stoic and stern. The only time we really see Steve emotionally whipped up is when he's tormented by being too sickly to join the army. And that frustrated determination landed him a spot as the world's first super soldier. But once he got that rockin' bod, his emotions seemed to be perfectly under control at all times. Iron Man also went through some majorly traumatic events, and instead of processing that with a therapist, he just tinkered around with suits until he became a hero. Even when suffering from major PTSD, it's still about making the next suit and saving the next day for Tony. Then Thor was a total jerk who spent a few days with Jane and suddenly wanted to be a better person, which gave him his powers back. But all of these guys internalized any emotional issues when they found the empowerment of being a superhero on Earth. Good guys equal only good emotions. But Wanda is a very different situation because her powers are not gifts or tools. They weren't handed over as a reward for being good for the day, and they aren't something that she can take off and live a normal life. She has to stew in her abilities all the time, which forces Wanda to keep a constant control of herself. Otherwise, unpredictable things can happen. Case in point, when reality had taken everything it could from Wanda and she had a breakdown, it was like her her whole being went, fine, I'll make my own world with blackjack and hookers. No, perfectly curated neighborhoods and mind-controlled people. Yeah, that's the ticket. And because there was no one left qualified enough to handle Wanda, and I don't just mean vision, but the absence of Steve and Tony would be a really hard impact too, because they were both people who understood how complicated Wanda's situation was, and they gave her a chance to make something different out of her life. But because Wanda didn't have a calming go, coping mechanisms, or any kind of team helping her, she slipped through the post-blip cracks and made a place that allowed her to feel safe and have that normal, boring life that she really longed for. Really though, I think the spark that ignited the Westview Hex is that Wanda was denied a funeral for Vision. The military had taken over Vision's robotic body, and as has been the case in the Marvel Universe, the military is not a group of heroes. They're constantly constantly meddling in dangerous ways or overreaching their power, like when they go to Brazil to nab Bruce Banner, even though the US can't extradite people from Brazil. The military and the MCU are basically friends of humanity from X-Men. But in refusing to let Wanda hold a funeral for Vision, the military really blocked Wanda from coming to terms with what had happened and her part in those things. Wanda has hurt people.
people. She's felt ostracized and lashed out. She had to kill Vision in a futile attempt to save the universe that didn't even work. So having a funeral service and being able to bury something and say goodbye would have also been Wanda going through the steps to accept and let go of those dark areas in her life. And I'm positive that I can't be the first person to have noticed this, but when you stack together the episodes of WandaVision, you start to see Wanda is really processing different stages of grief. In the first two episodes, filmed before a live studio audience and don't touch that dial, Wanda is going through a huge bout of denial to the point where she won't even let herself remember that Vision is dead. And it's no mistake that those first two episodes are modeled after Bewitched and The Dick Van Dyke Show, because those were wholesome shows where no real life problems were ever dealt with. The episodes for those shows were all quirky anecdotes that wrapped up in 20 something minutes and they were a safe, fun ride to watch. And Wanda just wants to live in that perfect illusion so badly that she even rejects any intrusion into her world. Any offenders get cast away as soon as Wanda finds them and then she even cuts them out of the video feed. Then episode three, Now in Color, shows us Wanda as fear and anxiety slipping through with a surprise pregnancy, coupled with a big reaction when one of her mind-controlled neighbors turns out to be Monica Rambo, a plant from S.W.O.R.D. Monica manages to break free of Wanda's control long enough to really jar Wanda and poke holes in the lovely fantasy life that she's created. And Wanda can't have that, so Monica gets booted out of the hex. By episode five, on a very special episode, Wanda's entering the bargaining stage of grief as she starts to hit resistance from Vision and realizes that she can't control her twin sons at all. They are completely sentient and immune to her power. So what do you do when your husband is asking the wrong questions and your kids won't listen? Oh, you just bring in a dog to distract everyone. Hi, Sparky. Oh, uh, bye, Sparky. And even beyond bargaining with other people, Wanda starts bargaining with herself. Wanda's brother Pietro has returned from the dead and I'm sorry, but this was a fantastic opportunity to introduce the multiverse and it was squandered. But Pietro is dead. Wanda knows that and she's not in denial about it because she openly talked about it to Monica. Yet here's a new person claiming to be her dead twin and Wanda's response is like, no, this happens, this is real. And so we see Wanda bargaining with her own better judgment that no, this is worth the risk to feel happy again. By episode six, an all-new Halloween spooktacular, the stress is getting to Wanda and she's starting to get angrier. Her sons have aged like crazy and they have their own powers, none of which she can control. Vision won't stop going against her to the point that Wanda has to extend the hex to keep Vision confined. And Pietro strikes a nerve hard enough that Wanda flips her get out switch. All the stress of managing this game of The Sims is wearing Wanda down, which may be why she's trying to hit so many milestone moments with her family, like birthdays and trick-or-treating with your kids, because Wanda's starting to realize that her world is going to fall apart soon. And we can see that tension building up until Agatha Harkness reveals herself in episode seven, breaking the fourth wall. Then we hit episode nine, the series finale, where Wanda goes through all the stages of grief again while being antagonized by Agatha. Wanda feels anger towards Agatha fear when the residents explain their experiences, denial as she claims the townsfolk are all a trick from Agatha, and bargaining when Wanda realizes that dropping the hex will disintegrate her family. Wanda still has the mindset of, no, no, I can fix this. I can make this work somehow. Then it all fades into a hard acceptance. I can't stop this from all falling apart because I can't control this town any longer, but there are some things I can control. I can control embracing who I am, the mythical Scarlet Witch. I can control Agatha from manipulating my emotions and stealing my powers. She can be stopped. And I can give myself a chance to say the goodbyes that I was denied before. With that, Vision, Billy, and Tommy all disappear from existence, and a broken Wanda is resolved to understand herself and learn her powers. That clarity and focus may very well lead to a way to bring her boys back to life. And something I find really 
really interesting about WandaVision is that even the title slants towards Wanda's control. Vision isn't even really there. It's all based on Wanda's memory and desires. He's her vision of vision. So even though that vision seems sentient, he's probably more like a puppet than anything. And Vision going against Wanda was Wanda's psyche understanding that she can't do this forever. Her secrets had to be found out. Her grief had to be dealt with. And it was all only a matter of time until everything came apart. But for all intents and purposes, I do think that Vision was entirely under Wanda's control. Similarly, the town of Westview is run down and dingy without the influence of Wanda's hex. So it leaves us to question, was any part of her control good? And couldn't she just rebuild her own little world at her isolated cabin? There doesn't have to be an entire town. I also have questions about where White Vision went and how Agatha is still trapped as the nosy neighbor without the hex around. But apparently we don't deserve that closure right now. One thing is for sure though, that last end of credit scene shows us a mother not willing to give up on her imaginary children. And if WandaVision shows us how powerful Wanda is while trying to suppress her emotions, think of what'll happen now that she's embracing them. I might be overthinking it, but that's literally my job. WandaVision. All our hopes are on you. Hi guys, welcome to Derps. And if you are new here, uh, the theory video essay thing is over. We're just going to kind of talk for a few minutes. Kind of a personal vlog here at the end just to get to know people better. And yes, I'm here without hair, makeup, anything done because I just had a procedure in my face, which is why I'm blocking it because that's what I'm going to talk about today. Those of you who have followed me for a while, you have more than likely noticed the gigantic mole on my face. I went into the dermatologist and he was like, yeah, let's, uh, let's shave this mole and then we'll send it off to get biopsied. And even when it was flat, I've always hated it because people have looked at me and said, ew, you have herpes. Ew, ew, ew. And no, it's a mole. Like herpes move, I'm pretty sure. Like this thing has been on my face since I was at least 15. So now that it's gone, let's have a big dramatic reveal where I have gone from having a giant mole right on my lip to a mole shaped scar of almost the same color right on top of my lip. Look, I bet on camera it doesn't even look any different. I bet it looks the exact same, probably even worse because I don't have makeup on because I can't put makeup on and I can't use my like acne scrub stuff so I look horrible. But looking at myself in the viewfinder, <laughs> It looks the exact same as it did before. Now I'm hoping that the scar is gonna kind of heal up and once the swelling and everything else fully goes away that it will not be as noticeable or if there is a spot, I'll at least be able to cover it with makeup. Whereas before I was just putting lipstick over half of the mole and <laughs> It, I mean, I was trying my best, but let's be honest, it looked hideous. And it's funny because my lip feels lighter on this side, but <laughs> I hope I'm not grossing anybody out here. I know this isn't the typical kind of topic that I cover at these end of video derps, but I kind of felt like there was going to be at least a few people that noticed that something was different with my lips. So instead of trying to hide it or have people try to be like, oh, look at her, she got plastic surgery or, you know, something. It's always something negative when you're a woman who changes anything. So I thought I'd get out in front of it and be really open and honest about it. And the procedure actually did not hurt as bad as getting cavities filled. So I was surprised, which a dentist is a whole other subject. I hate going to the dentist because they're so mean and I have such a weird mouth. But you know, also it's 2021. We're coming up to springtime. I really want to get back into being motivated for, you know, losing weight and getting healthy again. And two years ago, you know, I was doing pretty well. I lost 50 pounds in, I think, six months, but then I lost motivation and then the quarantine hit. So I really, really lost motivation. And now it's like, oh, I put all this weight back on and I got to do something. So when I do these derps moving forward, you're probably going to hear me talk more and more about some health and fitness stuff I've been doing just to kind of check in. But we'll see. You always know that a diet or an exercise routine is working when people start to comment on it without you talking about doing any kind of diet or exercise. So we'll see how it goes. Um, I'm hopeful that this little health scare has got me motivated enough to want to live to see tomorrow. So maybe I'll be able to get myself together this time. We'll see. My weight has been just this up and down crisis 
struggle my whole life. I got fat around third grade and I didn't really lose weight until 10th grade and since that point it has just yo-yoed all over the place. Anyways though, I do have a few more videos that I've already recorded where I have the mole present so if you should see it pop up in one video and disappear in the next, that's why. And if you are watching my other series where I'm reading the Harry Potter books, the There I've Read It series on the family, then you are definitely going to be seeing my mole present for like most of book three. I think I've filmed through chapter 12 at this point. So yes, again, if you see it and then it disappears, it's not herpes. It's not a disease. It's not that the mole came back. It's just that I film things in advance. Anyways, guys, as you can probably hear, my throat is all scratchy and I am a little bit exhausted because I don't usually turn around a video in a few days time. I usually spend months working on them because I've gotten so depressed and slow lately. But you know what? If Wanda can work through her issues and become a better person for it, then that's what I want to do too. So see, I was able to tie this back into WandaVision somehow. It's a stretch, but I'll take it. Anyways, guys, my glasses are absolutely filthy and these lights are reflecting every little dot of dust in them. So I'm going to go um, get myself together for the day. This video is probably like, surprise, I'm actually an old lady in a shawl, which these shawls are a lot more comfortable than people would think. They are much better than trying to wrap up in a blanket when you have a room that seems to be blessed by the Ice King. But yeah, I'm really gonna go now. Thank you guys for listening to me ramble on here and we'll see you next time, family members. Bye! Well, family members, we're almost done, but I want to invite you to hang out with me in some other places. I'm on Twitter and Instagram as my own personal self, and I have a Facebook page too, but I mostly just post photos over there. And sometimes people say, hey, McGann, I want to mail you something. How do I do that? Easy. Just click the About tab on my channel page, and my most current P.O. Box info will be right there. I also run another channel, The Family. It's really a hodgepodge channel where we might post anything. Oh yeah, and I also sell shirts and stickers and stuff with the family and the fangirl logos. If that is your cup of tea, I have a link in every description of every video. Finally, if you want to help out the fangirl channel and make sure I'm putting out video essays for years to come, the best way you can help is by subscribing and watching more of my videos, whether they're new, old, whatever. Maybe even share one or two on social media, help spread the word. People who watch to the end of videos like you helps to tell the site, hey, this is a good video. We should recommend it to other people. So if you made it this far, leave me a comment of something like, hey, I made it to the end. Love ya. See you next time, family members. Bye.